Randy, let's go right to the phone lines. First up today, Tim. He's listening in Syracuse, New York. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. I do have a question for you uh, that revolves around suicide. Um, my wife and I are taking a class. Uh, it's a faith class that teaches us how to share our faith with other people that are not believers. And the question came up, or the comment came up from our pastor who was leading, and he said that when people die, some people have a tendency to say that, well, they're, they're in a better place. And my wife said, well, what does the Bible say about suicide? How do you address that? And I really didn't have an answer, and uh, we were already out of the class, and I didn't get a chance to ask the pastor. And I honestly have I've never heard anybody speak about that. What does the Bible say about suicide? Because... How do you speak to somebody about that that maybe has had that happen in their life without pushing them away? Yeah. Well, first of all, from a biblical perspective, we cannot say that suicide is the unforgivable sin. There's the possibility that in a moment of despondency, someone does something that they wouldn't ordinarily do or do if they were in a right state of mind. So there's Uh, no basis biblically on which we can say that suicide is the unforgivable sin, but in the same vein, we should never contemplate in our right minds suicide, because suicide is murder. It's the murder of yourself. And no one should take that prerogative upon themselves, because life and death are the prerogative of God and God alone, and we should never try to take over that prerogative from God. Okay. So there's not a, a, a biblical reference, but it, it does speak to it in the sense that it is murder. Well, yeah. I mean, it is. It is the murder of oneself. And as such, the Bible does speak to it because the Bible says, you shall not murder. So suicide is a direct attack on the sovereignty of the very one who knit you together in your mother's womb. Again, if you're in the right mind, you should never even contemplate such a thing. But on the other hand, I want to make clear that there are those who have committed suicide when they are despondent in a in a frame of mind that is an unnatural frame of mind. And therefore, we cannot, on the basis of the Bible make it the unforgivable sin, because by definition, the unforgivable sin is a continuous, willful, ongoing rejection. It's not an act. It's a continuous action. Right. Okay. All right. Well, that that helps. Good. So really, I guess the question then goes back to whether or not that individual had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the entrance requirements into heaven are just that. Someone who has a relationship with Jesus Christ has a relationship with him because he has done all that is necessary to reconcile us to God. And we can't do that in and of ourselves. He is the one who lived the life we could never live, and it's his righteousness that becomes our ticket to heaven. We are covered by a righteousness through faith in Christ. Exactly. Well, thank you very much. You got it. Thank you so much for your call.